Okay, everybody, today we're going to learn about compound turbos and cylinder head, specifically ported cylinder heads. If you have awesome compound turbos, do you need a ported cylinder head? Or will so much boost work its way through and it doesn't even matter? Today, we're lucky. Our good friend Mike out of Arizona has a compound turbo uh, with a 362 paired with a 476. And he was making in the high 800 horsepowers, and he wanted to know if I switch the head only, no other changes. Will it make a difference? And I'm like, I think it will, but I didn't really know for sure. I, I was pretty sure it would, because efficiency always has gains. But how big a difference will it make? We did back-to-back -back dynos on this truck. We did dyno with a stock cylinder head with compound turbos. Again, this is a high 800 horsepower truck. And then we swapped a cylinder head with one of our stage two cylinder heads. No other changes. Stage two versus stage versus stock cylinder head. Ran it again. And the results were pretty pretty shocking. So today we're going to go over some dyno graphs, talk about uh, you know what kind of differences the head made on boost, drive pressure, power, torque, all that stuff. So right now let's take a look at the summary of these different runs. So this is the first run. This is with the stock head. So our peak power on this one is 894 horsepower. Again, this is a pretty stout truck. Compound turbos are amazing. I love them, and it's probably one of the first mods I would do. Uh, but he wanted some more, so then we went with a the uh, stage two port had no other changes. And we got to 965 horsepower and uh, 2,100 foot pounds of torque. So huge jump in power with, I mean, no air upgrades besides the cylinder head, of course. No fueling upgrades, didn't change injectors, timing nothing. All does the cylinder head. So I was pretty happy with, that's like a 70 horsepower gain and like a 200, 190 foot pounds of torque increase with that one change is pretty cool. So right now let's go to the graphs and uh, start comparing stuff. So here's your horsepower only. The solid line is your uh, stage two head. This is the upgraded one, obviously. And the dash line is your stock cylinder head. So down here you can see, we kind of started to run a little bit hotter with the stage two. Uh, the well, How this works is it starts recording. So we started recording this at 17, 1700 RPM and uh, we just came a little hotter. However that is, we try hard to get these the same starting point because we don't want a fake run, but as it starts higher and stays higher the whole way, you could say, okay, this is from a different start. But up here, so the differences are, are are very apparent right here. So this is the the 900 and what was it, 64, 962 horsepower here, and so this is a 964 run, and our peak power happened way higher up here, which is just where it measured it. I mean, they're pretty both flat right through here. And this is 90 horsepower runs. This did 894. The power is definitely substantially better with the cylinder head. And uh, let's take a look at the torque. So again, as you can see, we started to run a little higher. Torque went much higher. And again, it carried it all the way throughout the run. So uh, these runs, we were dropping 2,900, 3,000 RPMs, kind of what we took these guys to. Anyway, it's 1,000 horsepower, you know, 2,000 foot-pounds of torque. Pretty gnarly. <laughs> this is a... This is a beautiful truck. If you saw on the runs, this is a dually, original owner, white. I mean, this every time this guy goes to a gas station, he has people offer to buy it from him. It's such a beautiful truck. What I'm really interested in now, let's get to the data. Let's get to the boost, drive, and uh, maybe some interstage as well. So before I go on, what do you guys think is going to happen? Do you think boost numbers are going to be higher or lower with the forward head? Obviously, you're making more power. So do you think the drive pressure will be higher or lower with the new setup, with a new head? And what do you think is going to happen to interstage boost? Let's pull it up, let's take a look. Let's start with boost. So, this one's not too surprising me. Boost went down. I mean, it's not surprising and it is surprising because we're making 70 more horsepower. Generally, you make more horsepower, you need more boost to do it. So to make to make more power with less boost is pretty impressive. It really illustrates how terrible the stock intake flows. I'm a big fan of the intake upgrades. So the difference is not massive. We're talking 79 versus 76 pounds of boost here. So three pounds less boost. but. The fact that we're making more power, less boost is pretty cool. Let's compare this to the drive pressure. What do you think? More drive, less drive. Place your bets, and here we go. Aha! Okay, drive pressure quite a bit higher with the stage two head. Why? Why would that be? Okay, so take a look at these drive numbers. Um, we're 108 pounds or 108 psi on the big cylinder head versus 99 on the Stock cylinder heads. So this is kind of interesting. If you think about what drive pressure is, where are you measuring drive pressure? Drive pressure is measured between the cylinder head and the turbo. It's it's the pressure between those two systems. So if the cylinder head is able to feed more exhaust flow to the turbo, and the turbo is not really able to handle it, you're going to have more pressure there. 
And so this kind of indicates to me that this this truck would be happy with a larger turbo on the manifold, which this is not a huge turbo. This is a, a Borg Warner 362, the 68 millimeter turbine wheels. This is not the large turbine, the 62, small turbine, 68 and a 0 0.70 housing. And we paired it with a 476. Very simple setup, it's been around for a while. Makes great power, works real well. But that little 0.70 turbine housing only has so much it can swallow and I'm just gonna take. So as you feed it more and more, that pressure is gonna, gonna add up. That's driving the turbo harder, but since the air intake side of the head is so much more efficient, it can it can just take it better. So even though the turbos are spinning faster, I mean, I don't have speed sensors, but I guarantee if I did, the turbos are spinning much faster here because we're making more power. So there's more air getting through the system, which means the turbos are spinning faster, even though there's less boost. So that less boost and higher drive, I think this, I mean, of course the, the truck would do better with bigger turbos, but I mean, anytime you go bigger turbo, you suffer drivability. So this thing really drove super nice and it was just a joy on the street, I just, but it was shocking to me how much more drive pressure it made than the old setup did. Let's pull a look at interstage boost. This is the pressure between the large turbocharger, the 476, and the uh, small charger, 362. And these ones started pretty similar. What's interesting is how much more interstage it made with the old cylinder head versus the new cylinder head. And this one's kind of mind boggling to me. I've kind of thought about this and I'm just trying to think like, are we driving the 362 so hard now that it's just, it's gobbling up more air from the 476 and the 476 is maxed? I mean, it wouldn't seem that way to me because we did make more power. So obviously we're flowing more air because we didn't change fuel. We didn't change timing. Drive pressures increased. So we didn't pick up power from there. We're literally moving more air through the system. More oxygen molecules are reacting with the fuel creating more power. So why is interstage lower now? It's just gotta be because we're driving that 362 so hard with that extra exhaust full hitting it and it's diffusing it well before it hits the 476 and is gobbling more air with that 362, working the 362 harder. It's very interesting to see this because we have more drive and less boost. So our drive pressure ratio is actually worse with the bigger head. Speaking of drive pressures, let's do some simple calculations here. On the old head, we're at 79 pounds of boost and 100 and one pounds of drive and that's going to give us about a 1.27 drive pressure ratio which means our drive pressure is 1.27 times our boost on the new head we're at 76 pounds of boost basically and 110 pounds of drive so that gives us a 1.44 so at the 894 horsepower i would say these turbos are a better fit at that level not that they can't make more they obviously can but the drive pressures are much happier there as we're getting the 1.44 we're kind of creeping our way up to where I'm thinking, yeah, guys, we need more turbo than this, which I've said this truck could definitely benefit from bigger turbos, but then you suffer, you know, drivability. And that's not what this guy wants. He still tows at this truck. There's a lot of fun stuff in this truck. I think now it's turned more into a hot rod truck for him, Actually, <laughs> but it's still, it's a very multi-purpose uh, vehicle that he can drive everywhere, go anywhere he wants, and it works great. And this truck does work well. I see we're right around a thousand horsepower, just shy of a thousand horsepower, almost to 2,200 foot pounds of torque, blows tires off like crazy. And it's just really interesting. So anyway, this is kind of a quick run through on some interesting stuff we had. So I'm a big believer in cylinder heads. I think it's a great upgrade and I am shocked it actually made this much of a difference making no other changes. I feel like this is a great change for this truck to make further changes. At this point, I'd, I'd probably start upgrading a fueling a little bit. I'd probably upgrade turbos now just because I'd want to. That's just me. I, I, I have issues every time I can upgrade something I think I should. In reality, this truck works amazing. There's no reason to upgrade anything further, but I'm like, dude, you're so close to a thousand horsepower. We probably should do that. <laughs> but you know, he was very happy with us and he, he drove it away happy and it worked great. I should say also that when we shot this video, if you go back and watch this video in its entirety, we've had some name changes of our cylinder heads. So our towing port, it's now our stage one. This is our stage two. We call it our stage one, but actually the head porting is what is our current stage two head. A towing head would not have had this big of a difference, but I, I'll bet you it's 80% is good. Airflow improvements always yield benefits, always yield improvements in efficiency. Anyway, guys, this is just some fun information, some fun data for you to look at of a stock cylinder head versus a ported cylinder head. So I hope the information was good for you. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time.